four to six days later. This week on the channel, I try to impress a cat. It didn't work. Oh yeah, and then this happened. Welcome back party people. So we're about in week number four of our practice here. So somewhere around 14 to 16 hours of practice put in so far. And as you can see, still struggling just a little bit with consistency, but I'm not too worried because generally skills like this really click with me at about the 40 hours of practice mark. So I'm feeling pretty confident here. Let's take a look at how this thing unfolds. You're gonna to wanna to stick around to the end of this one. It gets a little wild. If you're unfamiliar with what I'm doing here, please go back and watch part one of this video where I start learning to wheelie this OSIT 20R uh, kids trials motorcycle and it's fully electric. Oh, I'm so tight today. <laughs> also, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I post a lot of content around skills and DIY both with mountain bikes and electric motorcycles as well as camping in an adventure van that I built specifically for boondocking. So if you like that type of content, please go check out some of the other videos. And we have some whiskey throttle, and that's what happens when your arm pump gets to a point where you just can't uh, release the throttle. So uh, I do come to a revelation later on in this video, so stay tuned. And this is just another technique I use to make sure I'm balanced over the bike. Just stand up, let your arms go, and balance it out. It really does help relieve some of the tension as well. Oh, and another typical move here where you shift your weight over to one side versus the other and you don't counterbalance with the wheel turning or with your right leg and you start going into a little circle there. Keep in mind also that this is a smaller kid's motorcycle and there's really no way for me to squeeze enough with my knees because my knees are actually higher than the seat itself. So that doesn't help at all uh, to relieve some of the stress from my arms. So this was a pretty good one and this is when you know that your practice is actually paying off and so a few times you get these longer wheelies and they're just confidence boosters so keep going. And as soon as I get a good wheelie in this happens and for the next few tries it's just horrible so the consistency is not there yet but you know I'm only like I said I'm only 15 to 20 hours into this and I have another probably good 20 hours before I kind of really start to be a lot more consistent on the wheelie on this particular motorcycle so I'm just going to keep at it. Doesn't take long for my arm to pump up. And there's a statement that you will hear me repeat throughout this video. And again, it goes back to probably improper arm throttle control and also not being able to squeeze with my knees because I'm, my knees are over the height of the seat of this particular bike. I'll also note here that I use these videos to analyze myself to see things that I'm doing wrong that I could do better so I always try to get multiple angles from the front from the back and from the side so keep that in mind if you have a photographer or videographer that's filming you all right so we're back on a different day here and it is really cold so I've got a thicker coat on and it's also windy so there might be some wind noise in this particular video but notice that now I have a GoPro Hero 8 on a selfie stick taped to the front of the bike for some different angles here so now I get to see my own body position as I'm riding out the wheelies.
It's almost indistinguishable that I'm doing a wheelie in these videos, and I attribute that to the video stabilization of the GoPro Hero 8. But if you listen carefully, you can hear the front wheel hit the ground. So you'll also notice that I'm making a concerted effort here to actually counterbalance myself using my legs and my knee position versus turning the front wheel. I think when you're first learning the wheelie, it's much easier to use your body to counterbalance versus turning the front wheel. And this is another example here of me kind of powering the wheelie out there at the end. And I think this kind of helps you in the practice, especially getting comfortable at higher speeds with the front wheel lifted like that. So I will tend to power those out uh, just to get good practice in. Ooh, that wind is cold. I'm going to put my windbreaker on. It's cold. You may also notice that I keep looking over my shoulder out toward the pond behind me and I'm just looking out for any other traffic that may be coming through walkers or other bikers to make sure I'm not uh, interrupting their kind of daily activities there and being a good steward of the use of this particular area. It's getting a little late in the day but I think this is a pretty cool shot the way the skyline's kind of lit up behind me and uh, the bonus too is that the wind dies down a little bit later in the afternoon. All right, so the one thing that um, I kind of learned today during the practice is the position of my arm on the throttle. Since I'm standing up all the time and this throttle has a bunch of loose play in it, about the first four millimeters, it really doesn't do anything. So I've been riding with my hand way up here because when I stand up, that's a natural position for me. And, but when I lean back to do the wheelies, it was making me use my forearm muscles a lot. So what I've been trying to do now is I'm trying to get my arm down to here. And that way, when I lean back, it's almost a natural on position when I start the throttle and I only have to give a little bit and I'm hanging on kind of with the indent in my fingers there instead of almost to the palms and you can kind of tell where the uh, calluses form on your hands if you don't already have them if you're kind of gripping too high or too low so one of the things I'm going to start concentrating on is gripping a little bit lower because of the position that I sit on this bike that's not going to be the case for all bikes. Obviously, this is a small bike for me. Um, it is a kid's trial bike, so or kid's trials bike. So I'm just going to have to find and learn these things, adjust my body position, adjust to kind of uh, suit the type of riding I'll be doing on this small bike. So that's what I learned today. I'll see you next time. All right, party people, we're back at it for the next day of practice and uh, a different camera angle once again. And I have the tripod now set up on the far side of the practice area, just kind of getting some far out shots. And uh, we'll move the camera around a few times. And today gets a little bit wild, folks. So you want to stay tuned to the end of this video to see exactly what happens. But uh, keep in mind, there's one way in this place and there's one way out. And uh, if you're driving back here, well, there's really nowhere to escape. I really felt good this day. We uh, There were a few days I took off in between the last practice and this practice, so my body had uh, recovered fully, and I, the confidence was just sky high, and so I really got some good runs in here, and I was just practicing the technique. So I really focused on throwing my weight straight back um, and making sure that I'm using my legs to counterbalance And this is one of these freaky phenomenon with these birds and they just either get spooked or some kind of ritual and they just all come out of the woods at one time. You can see them there in the camera and it's super loud. 
But I experienced this a couple of times last year while walking in this woods as well. So if you're a bird lover and you know what they're actually doing here, let me know down in the comments below. And there's a second round as well, and here they come. And they circle back around and go right back into the top of the trees. If you watch part one in this series, you know last week it was super wet when I was practicing, so I either got some moisture or some contaminant on my brake pads, and I need my brakes, my rear brakes, to function properly in order to keep from looping out. All right, it was getting toward the end of the practice, and I wanted to do something a little different, so I wanted to practice wheeling off and wheeling up that ledge that you see behind me there, and so I'm moving the tripod over to a different section to capture that camera angle. So if you notice in the left hand corner of the video, there are some lights that are coming down the road beside the pond there. And I know that was not good. There's usually no traffic back there whatsoever. And as I turned the motorcycle around and glanced over, I noticed it was the sheriff's car. And I just kind of just continued riding out because I knew what was in store for me. And I just wanted to finish out a good session here. I thought I had actually cut the recording of the video off at this point but apparently I kept it running and uh, it stayed running throughout the video. The cop pulls around beside me so you can't see the car in the video while he's talking to me but you can see it here pull up and I actually captured the audio. Super nice guy. I just hate it that he got called out for something like this. I know he has way more pressing issues to deal with but nonetheless you know I was breaking the law and I have to accept that but uh, I still don't understand why people are so douchey and want to do things like this hey man what's up how you doing hey I hate the body you know I get it I know, I know what <laughs> I, and I know you're having fun and I hate to be the one to come out here and talk to you um we've had at least one but I think it's two people calling saying that they saw a white van come out here and they're saying that they're riding motorcycles back here and not okay. supposed to be this is the last place I want to come feed, not to not to ride. Um, apparently, I guess this is owned by or run by the business back here. Oh, really? Um, and so I guess the the cleared trail is for their employees to come and walk. And I think it's one of their workers that are saying they're not supposed to be out there on motorcycles. And yeah, yeah, no worries. I'll leave. I won't I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like it's my it's my uh, for the longest time it was kind of where I could get out of the way oh, of everybody. No, <laughs> Well, uh, I, I was telling the guy, I was like, there's only one. He was like, yeah. I was like, I, not coming in from this side, but coming in from the other side. Yeah. I've seen other people ride, and I was like, there's only one. He was like, yeah. I was like, well, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen more, but. Yeah, and no then I didn't. I didn't realize it was this far back here. I told him, I was like, because I was thinking it was total, like, muddy trails. And he's like, no, it's just a couple mud holes. You get back there. I was like, all right, let me ride yeah, back. Yeah, some of those mud holes are pretty deep. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm glad I didn't get stuck. But yeah, the one up there is pretty deep. But uh, yeah, yeah, no worries. All right, man. Well, I'm sorry. I'm, like I said, I'm sorry. If, if, I wish there was more places to ride because I, I grew up riding them too. Yeah. Well, cool, man. All right. All right, man. Please be safe, okay? All right. And sorry. Thanks. Is that electric? It is electric. Holy smoke. Does it do about like the, what's the equivalent? Like a... It's a trials motorcycle, so it's meant for slow balance moves. So it, it's about 20. Is that all of my big butt will do on it? No, I hear you. Cool, man. All right. All right, man. Take care. Thanks. You